it's Lisa. If you like pages that are a little different, I think you're going to like today's page. Um, I have a photo from probably from the 70s of the outside of the shop that my parents ran, the business that they ran. Unfortunately, I don't have any photos of the inside, and that's really what I want my story to be about, is the time I spent in the shop, because the shop was like my playground. I mean, I spent plenty of time outdoors uh, in warm weather, but in, in cooler weather, this is where I spent a lot of my evenings and Saturdays was hanging around the shop, whether it was playing in the storeroom or out in the main area when customers weren't there. So I have a lot of stories about that, and so I don't have the perfect photo, but I have a lot to say. I have typed up up um, just my thoughts and and I realized I was going to do some like bullet points but I realized that that these are really belong more in paragraphs and they're all kind of a little bit different because they're different ages uh, have different memories so what I thought I would do is take them using this wood background from simple stories harvest lane collection because the outside of the shop was wood and create some little envelopes to kind of talk about what happened on the inside these, I cut this uh, with a silhouette, and I will put the name of the specific file on the screen. It's one of Lori Whitlock's designs from the Silhouette Store, but I don't remember right now what all it was. So I'll put that on the screen so you can see it in case you're interested in it. Um, and I sized it down. I may have to go down a little bit more. I don't know. Um, I cut it out of craft or Chrome Cake cardstock from Stampin' Up. And then I thought I would do some embellishing. I'm going to put my little stories, one in each envelope, so I'll do several envelopes. And then I'm going to do a lot of embellishing using the kinds of products that my parents sold. I thought to myself, how neat it would be if I had some of those old wallpaper books or those old carpet samples. Well, I don't have the old stuff, but I do have older stuff uh, because I saved swatches of the things that were in our house. When we built our house, I created, put these little Ziploc bags with all these swatches of wallpaper. Some of these wallpapers are no longer in my house. I've, I've traded them out. We also um, sold uh, Formica countertop and I had that in my house when we first built. So I have lots of things that I can create embellishments out of. And one way or another, I'm going to get carpet on here. I don't know if I'm going to glue it in little groups or make a little border or what. but um, Somehow or another, I'm going to get some of these different products onto my page so it can represent what uh, the shop was like for me uh, growing up as a child. So I'm going to have probably six of these. I had six little stories coming down here and a title. And then um, my embellishments, I was envisioning them being on top of this. Let's see, I think this has to glue that way. Um, so I don't know. I, I, this is say this is going to be a different kind of page. So my plan was to put these on either side of the photo, and I was just measuring them and realizing that at the present size they're too large. I could do a single row of them down the side, or I could do a row down the bot across the bottom, and that's an idea that I'm kind of warming to. Maybe with some additional ones. I just spent some time here trying to figure out the best size. Um, I came up with a size and kind of marked my journaling as to what it would need to, to be. And by having five of them across the bottom. And then I took a break and went to lunch. And when I came back, I had a bit of a brainstorm that I needed to combine some of the stories and have only four and make them quite a bit larger. Because what I could do is not just put the journaling in there, but also put the embellishments inside the pockets instead of on top of them or inside the envelopes. Now I cut these uh, designs with the silhouette as I said and they're designed to have a little white circle on top of them like a you know a mailing envelope where you'd wrap the string around it. So I go to do this <laughs> and I did not plan well. My cropodile, because I, I have the normal size cropodile, not the you know the big bite one, it just won't fit. It, it won't go down deep enough into this. So I tried a few things. I tried marking the hole where it would fit and then cutting out a larger um, circle, a white circle. I'd originally cut a half inch one. I tried cutting a three quarter of an inch one. Still not big enough. So what I'm going to have to do is take some out of that uh, cutout. And I used the um, uh, Cricut, or no, excuse me, the Creative Memories cutters to cut one of those out. And once I've got the right size, then I'm just going to use that one as a, a template to do the rest of them by hand because I would never get them all the same if I tried to do them with those uh, manual cutters.
I've zoomed in here um, to cut one of these and show you the process again. I'm I punched a small circle, I punched a small hole, then punched out the half inch, and then put that the grommet through it and sealed it with the crocodile, and now I'm gluing everything together. So once I got the sizing right, this this went very quickly. Now I'm not going to put a grommet on the top because the top flap is not going to close. It's going to be covered up with all of the journaling and the other uh, embellishments that I'm using. Some of my journaling is double-sided or is, should be folded over so you can see both sides of it. I'm going to um, round the top corners so it can look like a little tag coming out there. And then I'll be tucking in some of these other embellishments. My title here is going to be uh, at the shop or the shop. I'm using some chipboard that I punched out, so I just go around it with an emery board to get those little extra pieces off the edge. And I want to use some crackle medium. My first effort at crackle medium didn't come out so hot, so I'm going to try it on these letters. I don't think I put it on thick enough. I was experimenting the other day. But I had seen somebody do this on its really elaborate project. Unfortunately, I don't have a link to it. I, it was just one of those videos I watched one night thinking, oh, this is beautiful, but I'll probably never make this. But she was using crackle medium, and I had never experimented with it. And it's, it, it's really kind of interesting. You put down a coat of paint, which I'm doing here, and then you're going to use a contrasting paint on the top. What I haven't decided is whether I'm going to use a light contrasting paint or a dark. So I um, put down my first coat of paint and then I go over it with the after it dries with the crackle medium and I'm putting it on quite a bit thicker this time than I did when I was experimenting the other day and I'll let that dry and then I've got a white paint and a burgundy paint and the reason I have these other little odd pieces of chipboard is I, I painted those up just as experiments so I could see what the light color over the pink would look like or what a darker color would look like over the pink and they're both really pretty Hopefully you can see a little bit of the white there, and then the red one, you can also see the crackle. When I lay them on the background paper, I very quickly decide I like the red better with my particular project. The white looks good, it just doesn't look as good with my project since my photo has so much white around the edge. So I'll go ahead and coat the letters with the red paint, and they'll, what they'll start doing is cracking, and it will look like an antiqued kind of finish to it. And I'll show you a close-up of these in the final uh, part of the video so you can see how they, they came out. I've got to trim up the edges a little bit. I had a little bit of that crackle paint around the edges, but I trimmed those off. Now, in the shop, my dad did a lot of handwritten signs for things. Because, you know, this was back before we had personal computers and he never did have a personal computer so he hand wrote his signs and I thought I would make little signs for each of the different products that they sold they had draperies um, and they had wallpaper and carpet or other kinds of flooring and he actually started his business making picture frames and that's where this little piece came in I have saved this frame I think it was from my mind's eye and it came in a pack of stuff I never thought I would use it. It's just been tucked away, and I kept thinking, oh, I should just throw that little one, that little die cut away. I'll never use it. Finally, I have a purpose for it, because it looks like a picture frame. Uh, I just never thought it looked that great by itself. But it's perfect for what I want here, because I want something to represent the picture frame side of the business. So I had to cut a couple of them before I got one large enough. Now, because I had a window treatment business for a number of years, I did have some fabric swatches that represent the kind of fabrics that my parents sold back in the 70s we did a lot of moire we did a lot of um, casement fabric casement fabrics that open weave fabric you have a lot of commercial ap uh, applications and I had been to have some of those old discontinued samples so I got those from my uh, from my discontinued samples as well as going through things that I had to have put in my house like that pink wallpaper that I had in my upstairs bath thank heavens I've gotten rid of that and then this wallpaper is still in my dining room. So I've got a little piece of that. And then we come to the carpet, which I still have to figure out how I'm going to um, put carpet on this. 
that's going to be a little more challenging. I think, though, that these things need a bit more color because all the color is sort of coming out of the pockets. And another thing my dad did was put masking tape on stuff. <laughs> so, uh, you know, in the signage and things, maybe to hold something on. Well, I, rather than, again, I wanted color. Rather than using masking tape, I thought I'd use some washi tape. So I'm just going through my washi tapes here and pulling out several different ones to add a little bit of color to each of the envelopes. And, of course, the great thing about washi is if you don't like it, you can take it back off. So I'll play with some different ones and get those applied. And then next up, we're going to work on that carpet. Now I go through this quickly because I can't imagine anybody else would ever want to do this. But what I did was just add, uh, take a punch to circle and adhered it with some um, adhesive to a piece of paper so it wouldn't go all over the place. And used hot glue to hold various little carpet fibers to the paper. So I was kind of going for a flower sort of look, but what I really wanted was just to get those fibers on there. So they have meaning to me. And I needed something there in the middle, so I did a couple of um, pebbles, what do you call those things? Call outs. Speech bubbles, that's what they're called. It says, where is Lisa? And at the shop, because that was a common thing at that time in my life. Since I had the hot glue out, I'm just going to use hot glue to adhere these envelopes and a few of the heavier things inside the envelopes, um, like that uh, Formica sample. And I also added a vinyl sample to this last one over here where it has carpet. We really did all kinds of different flooring. And I'm going to show you some close-ups of some of the things, the crackle finish. And these uh, items I came from my own stash from the drapery world. But those were the kinds of things I actually played with as a child uh, back in the storeroom. So while this memorabilia isn't what other people would you know, find meaningful, it's very meaningful for me. And I hope the layout is the kind of thing that you might use if you wanted to capture a lot of memorabilia. In my No Photo, No Problem uh, ebook, I talk about, you know, issues with, of course, not having the perfect photo or not having a photo at all. I didn't have a photo of the inside of the shop. I'd love to have a photo of that storeroom, of all things, but I don't, the storeroom still exists, but it certainly doesn't have any of this kind of stuff in it anymore. So I don't have that, but I had a way to capture it. And in this case, I had to sort of recreate the memorabilia too because I didn't have the same things that I had back then exactly so I had to look for them in other sources use things that were maybe a little bit later in time period but still represent um, the same kinds of things that I had uh, growing up so it's been a fun page and a different kind of page. I find that some of these pages I spend a lot of time on, but this is really, this sums up a, this big chunk of my childhood. So it doesn't, I don't mind having spent quite a bit of time on this page because it's really important to me. Thank you so much for your comments, your thumbs up. Anytime you have questions, please leave them or send me an email. I would love to address them. Thanks again.